Hi mga garden. So this is Hardinerang Nanay once again. Welcome to our home, our garden. So for today, we are going to talk about microclimate. Kasi pag sinasabi natin kasing microclimate yan, mm, may isa pang climate within a bigger climate. Okay? Naiintindihan natin. Kaya nga, microclimate yan. Kasi maliit na climate within the wider uh, area. Okay. So, ano ba ang kahalagahan ng microclimate? Unang-una, higher yield, healthier plants, and of course, mas gaganahan ka pang mag-garden. Farm pa yan, home garden pa yan, vertical garden pa yan, maliit lang na espasyong garden. Microclimate uh, can be applied. Okay. Um, to further understand What is microclimate? Dadalhin ko kayo sa isang lugar na world class. Ito yung lugar na gusto kong balikan. We had the chance to go there before uh, SEQ, before the pandemic, like that. So, tara. Mm, papasyal ko kayo sa Cebu Safari Adventure Park. Okay. Para mas maiintindihan pa natin kung ano ba ang microclimate. Okay. <laughs> tara, para mas maintindihan natin, tara sa Cebu. The Cebu Safari Adventure Park ay pagmamayari ni M. Lollier. It is located in uh, Carmen, Cebu. It is actually, ano siya, uh, 330 hectares of land. Okay? So, andyan, ang dami dyan ang pwede nating puntahan. So, what amazes me talaga is that on how they take care of the animals. Yung animals nila, nandun talaga sa safari, wala sa cages. It's not a, a usual zoo. Okay? Ang ganda. Okay? Buhay na buhay yung mga animals. Yung mga animals, healthy. Kasi, they created microclimates for these animals. Okay? Meron yung uh, African savanna. So, So, yung lions nila, for example, yung white lions nila, um, nandun talaga sa area na malawak. Um, and then, natural na habitat para sa kanila. So, they created that for the lions for each kind of the animals. Meron ding um, tiger turf. Ang ganda ng white tiger nila. May water. So, nakakaligo yung uh, tiger. And then, um, paano kakain yan? Um, nilalagay talaga somewhere yung meat. And then, everyday, hinahanap niya. So, it, yung area na yung tiger na yun, yung white tiger na yun, hindi lang flat. Meron din um, uh, slopey area wherein parang nasa natural habitat talaga. Ang galing. The animals are healthy. Worth it yung <laughs> bayad. And then, gusto mo talagang balikan. <laughs> it's good for the kids. It's good for the adults. And then also, another one, uh, they have the aviary dome. So, see? The dome mismo is already a microclimate for the birds. The birds are healthy. And the yung aviary, yung kung saan yung mga birds na yan, yung mm, ano, napakalawak na area yan. Meron mga, sa dome na yun, nandun yung mga special birds, mga makulay. And then, another one is that meron pond doon na nandun mo yung mga um, ducks, yung mga ano pa yung flamingo, yung mga ganun. So, may pond doon na uh, they refresh themselves. Uh, another one that we're going to visit is itong, ito actually. Yan, the gardens of the world. So, sa gardens of the world na yun, Uh, it's so amazing now within that area makikita mo talaga yung different microclimates so um, ano <laughs> tara papasukin natin yung gardens of the world okay is this a, uh, you know is a collection of emurier ng ano mm, different plants around the world different uh, setups ng gardens na it represent the eight continents of the world. Etong gardens of the world na ito, it's al already a microclimate within the safari. And then within the gardens of the world, again, ah, meron na namang mga uh, microclimate na ginawa 
sa loob ng Gardens of the World. See? So, there's a bigger climate and then they created a, a microclimate. Within that microclimate, mayroon pa ulit na micro microclimate. Diba? It's amazing. So, nakikita na natin yung picture, diba? So, let's continue and then pasyal pa more. So, this is the entrance to the gardens of the world. Alright, you see those uh, Spanish moss hanging? They are very healthy because they are in an environment wherein it is very, uh, you know, suitable for them. This area is covered by garden net. So, they created a microclimate for these moss and other plants. And then also, they have these uh, cacti and succulents. It is another, uh, you know, microclimate. Desiertong desierto yung itsura niya, yung feeling niya. See, the animal, I, I mean, the plants are healthy. Alright? They are happy. Look at this. So huge. <laughs> It's uh, beautiful, right? Kasi, happy, happy siya doon sa kinalalagyan niya, okay? And then, we are going to the area wherein there are a lot of, uh, you know, orchids, right? It is called the Senorito um, Orchid Collection. Wow, it's so beautiful. The plants are actually healthy. Wala kang makikitang ano, unhealthy plant dito. The plants are really uh, happy where they are. Okay? This area is, you know, is a microclimate for these orchids also. So, um, look at that. They are so healthy. And of course, aside from uh, my more fertilizers, mga ganun, see, even the fish have its own uh, microclimate there. Okay? So, ang ganda. Pag pumapasok ka dito sa loob ng uh, garden na to, kasi in, it, it, it is covered by net, it's very, uh, you know, hmm, malamig. <laughs> malamig na masarap yung lamig niya. Kasi pag lumabas ka naman, mainit. Pero not so really because yung safari is full of trees naman. So this one, ano naman siya, Japanese area naman, di ba? Mga orient, mga ganon. So, may mga bonsai. si Japanese na Japanese talaga yung climate niya, di ba? si uh, I can see, meron ako mga nakita mga bigonyas dito. Eh. So, may mga uh, structures dyan, mga designs dyan, uh, Italian yung mga poste, yung mga ganon. Kasi sa si M. Lurien ay uh, Italian. Okay? So, look at that. It's a very beautiful place. Ang taba ng utak ng gumawa nito. And then, pag lumabas ka naman, ano yung mga makukulay na yan? Maya na yan. So, they are all where it is another microclimate for them. Diba? So, ang galing eh. Nang tingkat, pati yung mga orchids na to, they are under the full sun. So, nakita na natin yung mga iba't ibang microclimate dito sa uh, Cebu Safari Adventure Park. Ang taba ng utak ng gumawa nito ng nag Nakikita na natin na yung pag-create ng microclimate, it can be different climate from the surrounding climate. Gets natin. Yun dapat ang explanation yun. So, tandang idea. Nagkaroon na tayo ng idea, di ba? So, yung garden ni Hardinerang Nanay is just a home garden. So, I'll show you how I did it. <laughs> Etong mga ferns na ito, nasa lugar sila ng uh, home garden ni Hardinerang Nanay wherein they receive low light. Under that, meron tayong mga ano to, uh, what are these? Fire flush. Okay. They are just the same with the ferns na they survive in low light conditions. Okay. So, yun. That is another uh, way of creating climate. Yung San Severius din natin nasa actually uh, the same area with the ferns and then what are these? Uh, the fire flush. So, yan. Magkakasama sila doon sa area wherein they receive low light. 
Itong mga begonias naman, nasa area sila wherein they receive bright shade. Okay? Meron, nakaka-receive din sila ng morning sun, pero one hour to two hours only of morning sun. Early morning sun para hindi masakit, para hindi sila masunog. Mga succulents naman natin, nakaka-receive sila ng light na uh, six hours of sunlight. Meron akong ginawa dito na uh, hindi matapos-tapos na <laughs> uh, vertical garden ko. So, within this area, meron din tayong microclimate. Just like this one, ferns. So, nasa area sila ng vertical garden na uh, nasa ilalim nito. <laughs> Nitong bigonya na to, di ba? So, it's creating a microclimate, di ba? At tapos, mm, Itong si bigonya na ito, under ulit siya ng shade and then uh, net. Okay? So, ayan. Maraming mga klase or paraan ng paggawa ng microclimate. See? O, oh, diba? Alright. <laughs> so, my leaf propagations also are inside these containers. And creating this um, containers actually uh, creates a microclimate. Okay. So, meron silang climate sa loob. May, meron silang sariling temperature sa loob. So, microclimate works. So, like, comment, and share, and click the notification bell for more home gardening tips and vlogs from Hardenerang Nanay. Tenog, kabasan mo, tamalay oran. <laughs>